Yes, yes, people, welcome back to another video. If you haven't already, do us a favor, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you are new. We're on the way to 100k. Cannot wait to get there. We need that plaque. Uh, hope you're good. Really excited for tomorrow's watch along against Wolves. Uh, we'll be starting that at half four, so make sure you get in there nice and early. A uh, little bit of a kind of news stream today, or news video. Um, just like a short, quick catch up. Something that we do want to bring back is uh, video content for people who don't really like the long, the longness, longevity of a of a live stream so we're going to bring back videos which will just be rounding up uh, the news every day so we'll try and get one out every day um, but yeah straight into it then Kevin De Bruyne so there's lots of rumours about Kevin De Bruyne going off and I don't believe him for, for a start just to let you know but the Independent have come out and they're saying that Kevin De Bruyne has not said no so he's not said yes but he's not said no to a 70 million pound move to Saudi now on the back of that, or on the straight straight on it, absolutely not. I've spoke about this on streams quite a few times, and the chat are always a little bit mixed. I categorically just wouldn't sell Kevin De Bruyne, and people say that's stupid because of his age and uh, picking of injuries and stuff like that. But I think his experience and his worth to the team is a lot more than, especially seventy million pound. Uh, but I just wouldn't sell him. I think he's going to be very important for that next person to come in, uh, whoever we go for, whether it's a Verts or Musiala or I think just anyone in that midfield. I think Kevin De Bruyne will really show the ropes. I know he's, he's doing it for Phil Foden right now. I think it'll be a massive L for City this summer to just go, sit a bit, mate, sit a bit. Yeah, thanks for everything that you've done. Bye. And go, right, who are we going to get? I, I, I just don't see it. And also, Kevin De Bruyne right now is still an incredible player. I think people think he's washed. Kevin De Bruyne's not washed. That is not a thing. So, independent, mate, not backing it. Not backing it. I know he's, it's just a, he's not said no yet, but uh, that doesn't mean he's any. He's closer to saying yes either. Uh, that's not a thing. Uh, next up, congratulations to Phil Foden. Uh, he won the FWA Player of the Year. Um, so, big up to Phil. He's had a few comments in that. Um, obviously, buzzing from that, he, he's getting the plaudits because I think he's been... He's been our best player this season. Obviously, him and Rodri have been up there. Phil Foden has really stepped up this year uh, in a year that we've needed him because Mahrez leaving, um, we lost a lot of goal contributions. Whereas Phil Foden stepped up this year. Over 30 goal contributions for Phil is mad. It is absolutely insane numbers for him. And the season's not even over yet. It's, uh, it's exciting, man. And I still, I still think if we was in the Champions League, we might have had a run in for maybe a, a Ballon d'Or shout. But um, unfortunately, that's not the case. But Phil Ford in this season, absolutely smashing it. Midfield Phil is a thing. Uh, next up, we've got um, an outgoing. Another City youngster, Tommy Doyle, has made his permanent move now uh, away from Manchester City to Wolves. Um, I think we all kind of knew. Uh, Tommy Dahl, um, well, he wasn't really at the level of sitting. I think when he was just kept getting loaned out, um, we kind of went down the route of, yeah, it's not going to be a career at City. However, I do think he is a good player. He is a good player, and I'm, I'm glad that he's getting the game time. That, uh, or, or I'm glad that he's getting game time, and I'm glad that he's he's found a move elsewhere permanent to a good club. Like I, I think that's what that's what he needs. Um, obviously. It's hard to join a city. <laughs> Being an academy player and coming through to the city team, you have to be a certain level. Like, Tommy Dahl is a good footballer. However, there's a certain aspect to it. There's like a superstar level that you need to be showing. Um, and whilst Tommy Dahl was showing it, signs of being a very good footballer, not that kind of, that there's another, another step to get into the city side. It's just the benefit or it was spoilt really because we have such a, a star studied squad. Um, Next, this is a really weird one. Really weird one, this. City players have decided... Uh, this is as decided by the five-man leadership group. They now have car parking spots based on their status and longevity. So Kovacic, Nunes and Doku, being the new boys, are further away from the training ground entrance than those that have been there longer. <laughs> So the people who've been there for time have got sick car park spots. And you know I mean, Doku, Kovacic, Nunes, mate, they're parking on the side of the road. You know I mean, uh, it's a weird thing to do. Let us know in the comments. What do you think about the car park thing? It's, uh, it seems like a, 
a non-mover to me. I don't know. I don't know why. Why that's a thing. Do you know what I mean, oh, I, I'm gonna stay at City another year. Make sure I get myself that extra car park spot. Uh, I just don't. I, I just don't see it. I don't see it. Um, next, Bernardo Silva. Now we all know that Bernardo Silva has a 50 million pound release clause in his contract this season. Now. Where he's going to go, though, is a different thing. Or if he goes, people, some people like to think that he, he'll stay at City. And that's obviously an option for him. I think I think he'll go. I, th- I think he'll leave City this year. And um, basically, Lou Martin saying that Bernardo Silva knows he's not coming to, to uh, Barcelona. Uh, he's already saying he will not um, he will not live in Barcelona next year and City will not drop from the £50 million release clause. So... That's pretty mad, considering I thought if he was going to go anywhere, that'd be it. I can potentially see a PSG move. A PSG move could be on the cards. I think they'd pay the money to go and get him, and I think he'd be a good signing for him. However, we don't really deal with PSG. But, yeah, Barcelona being off, and that's his dream. Bernardo's had this dream scenario of moving from Man City to then going to Barcelona and then going back to Benfica. That was his ideal plan. And obviously, it's not gone the way that his ideal plan wanted. I thought if Barca could afford him this season, then yeah, they'd go pay the £50 million release clause. But seemingly, they don't want to pay the cash. And um, yeah, and Bernardo's saying it's not it. It's a non-mover. Um, there's also uh, some Ortega news. Um, Lazio's goalkeeper, I think City are potentially looking at. Now, this is something that I want to ask uh, the chat or ask you who are watching this. Do you think Ortega will stay this season? Like After this season, do you think he stays or goes? Because there's a big divide in the fact that we all know he's too good to be second choice. He's far too good to be a second choice goalkeeper. So what do we do? Like, How do we convince this guy? Because as soon as Edison comes straight back in, it's, it must be a bit disheartening for him because he can't hold down that number one spot. And he's openly come out before and said he wants to be challenging for that spot. Now, I think he's good enough to do that. I do think you lose a little bit of the quality on the ball, even though he's still very good. A little bit of quality on the ball when, when Arcega plays. However, he makes up for that by being an incredible shot stopper. Now, Edison makes up, uh, he, he makes up that um, ball playing Ability, he, he's got that more than that than uh, than Ortega has. However, he's not as good as shot stopper as Ortega is. So, I think if you could just merge Edison and Ortega into one player, then you'd just have the perfect goalkeeper. But personally, my opinion, um, I think it's a widely shared opinion. My opinion, though, I think we have the best uh, the best backup goalkeeper in world football. In world football, I don't think there's a better backup goalkeeper. Um, I know some people throw out that looting guy from Real Madrid, but I think Ortega is an incredible goalkeeper and we're going to have a very, very difficult time uh, trying to keep our hands on him. But um, other than that, there's some Wolves news. Um, Edison is back in training, speaking of goalkeepers. Edison's back in training and has been. He is in line or he's in contention to start tomorrow against Wolves, which is pretty big. Um, Erling Haaland, another big one. He's been training, obviously. He came on uh, the other day, so... Um, scored his goal as well, so buzzing that Erling Haaland's back. And uh, yeah, so looking good. Phil Foden and Ruben Diaz have been back in. Obviously, they was ill. So looking good, man. Looking good. And uh, Wolves will have a preview of the Wolves game, uh, a live stream at midday tomorrow. So we're doing a live stream at midday, um, a pre-match build-up kind of stream. And then we'll be live again at half four, going straight into that watch along. And also, there's a big sponsor on that at half time where we're going to open some packs and hopefully win some stuff. Um, but thanks for watching. If you want more short form content like this, just quickly rounding up what news has been going on today, then let me know. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you tomorrow for the streams. <laughs>